Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second uh, copy. The first copy was too long, so I'm going to shorten it down. What you need to know is that this is the parent function. This is number one. You know, things you need to notice is that it goes through zero, zero. It has a slope of one, so it's a rise of one, run of one. All right, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is also from negative infinity to positive infinity. The way we get that is if you look at the, if you notice this graph, it's going to go, it's going to touch all these x's, all right? And since it's going up and up and up, it's going to touch all these y's. So if you notice, it, as it's increasing this way, it's touching all these x's and all these y's. And as it's decreasing, it's touching all of these x's and, of course, all these y's. So that's why if it keeps on going on forever and ever and ever with these arrows on the end, that means it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity for both the domain and range. All right, we're going to take this parent function and we're going to compare it. All right, so if you look at these two, here's your parent function right here. All right, this is your parent function. How does this graph right here compare to your parent function? Well, first of all, the slopes are both positive, so we have a positive slope. All right, so we have a positive slope. It moved down, so it shifted. It shifted three units down. So now let's compare the slopes. All right, so let's compare the slopes. If you notice over here, I've got my parent function and this equation, okay? My y-intercept was at negative 3. My slope was 2 over 3, all right? My slope was 2 over 3. So I plug that in here. Here's my slope, my y-intercept, okay? Now, how does the slope compare? Notice that the slope is 1 compared to 2 thirds. The slope got flatter and changed from 1 to 2 thirds, and the y-intercept shifted down from 0 to negative 3 units. All right, again, it looks very similar to the parent function. You know, here's the parent function, and this is going to infinity. This is going to negative infinity for both x and y. So here's your domain and your range, okay? Next, number 3. Now, the only thing different about this one and the parent function, remember your parent function is goes through uh, right here. So here's your parent function. Now notice, parent function is a positive slope, whereas this one is a negative slope. Okay? So let's compare. And also, it goes from 0, 0 up to this point. So it shifted up two units. All right, so let's get rid of these real quick. Now, let's get the equation of this line. Here's my y-intercept of 2. That's my y-intercept. And then I pick a point and go down one to the right one. You could actually pick this point, too, and go down two to the right two. So you'd have 2 over 2, so a negative 2 over 2, which would still be negative 1. And that's what you put right there. All right, now, again... The domain and range don't change. They're the same as the parent function because they're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. But now, let's compare the two graphs, okay? This is just like saying plus 0. It shifted. It goes from 0 to plus 2, so it went up 2 units. And then it goes from 1 to a negative 1. So the slope changed from a positive to a negative and shifted up 2 units. All right, now these two points. Remember, when you have two points, find the slope. Change in y over change in x. 5 minus 0, negative 4 minus a negative 3. That gives you 5 over negative 1, which is a negative 5. Plug it into your point slope form. Use either one. I use the negative 3, 0. So here's your y value right here. This was your y. This was the x value plug it in. You can leave it like point slope or you can solve for y and give me slope intercept. Number five is the same way. I use, I'm using two different points. I found the slope to be one. I plugged it in to my point slope form. Now this is the correct, this is an equation of the line or you could solve for y. Solve for y goes from right here 
and continues right here. And you notice that the threes cancel out there and you get y equals x. All right, look at number six. Remember, look for your x's or your y's. Are your x's the same? In this case, they are. So if I were to connect these points, they would give me a line that's vertical. Remember, vertical is x equals. So the equation of the line is x equals negative 6. Just a little side note, the slope is undefined. Remember that. All right, number 7. Notice here the y values are the same. Just like in number 6, except now you're going to write y equals negative 4. In this case, the slope is 0. The slope is 0. So notice, there's a run of 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So there's a run of 4 units, but there's no rise. So 0 over 4 is 0, so this is the slope of 0. All right, just a little side note for you to remember for the test. All right, let's look at number 8. All right, you're given a slope and a point. Here's your slope. Remember, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right, notice you're given a slope of 6. And you're going to use the point of negative 2, 3. The negative 2 goes right there. That's your x value. Your y value is 3. That goes right there. Do not, do not, do not touch this y or this x. They are constant. They are constant. As you can tell, I still have a y and I still have an x there. Okay? And that's because that x is because I distributed the slope. All right. Now, let's look here. Once you have solved for y, you place that over here into your slope intercept form. All right. Notice I distributed and then I added the 3 to both sides. That cancels out, and I'm left with y equals. Now, as far as going from here, we're going to go straight down. We're going to go subtract 6 from both sides. And notice you get negative 6 plus y equals 15. All right, remember, for standard form, no fractions. All right, that's a good. Uh, X and Y on same side. That's good. X is first. All right. And X has to be positive. All right. So notice this is the one we've got to work on. X being positive. How do we do that? Well, we multiply this whole thing by negative 1. We distribute. And notice what you end up getting. 6x minus y equals negative 15. Number 9. <clears throat> write the equation of a line that has a slope of 0.75. I hope you recognize that that's 3 fourths. So now we have a slope of 3 fourths and a point of 4 negative 1 that we're going to use. Again, just like the one previous, the only thing different is Okay, we have a point slope form, nothing different than problem number eight. We solve for y, get slope intercept form. The only difference here is, if you notice, we have a four in the denominator. So we have to multiply the whole thing by four. The reason we do that is so we can get rid of that denominator. So four times y is four y. Four times three fourths is three x. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. We're going to take that 3x to the other side, so we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. Then, you end up getting negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 16. Just like the last thing, we multiply by negative 1. And it changes all the signs. It doesn't change the 3, it doesn't change the, the 4 or the 16, it just changes the signs. Look at number 10. Find the x and y intercepts, folks. Here's your clue right here. All right? There's your clue right there. Plug in a 0 for the x and solve for y. Then you plug in a 0 for the y and solve for x. So once you do that, 
When you plug in 0 for x, y is alone. And then you just solve for y, and you find that your y-intercept is negative 2. Remember, it's a coordinate point, 0, negative 2. All right. So then when you plug in a 0, oops, let me undo that. When you plug in a 0 for, for your y value, that means you're going to solve for this x. So bring it down. And x turns out to be 4, so you have a coordinate point of 4, 0. And here's a little graph of what it would look like. 4, 0, and 0, negative 2. All right, let's go to number 11. Let's see how much time we have left. All right, it's 10 minutes. Let's see if I can cut this down a little bit. Number 11, tell me everything you know about parallel lines. All right, the key elements are parallel lines have the same slope, perpendicular, have negative reciprocals. And these are some examples right here. These are examples of what they would look like. All right, this one down at the bottom, number 12. I want, you to write, I want you to write an equation of a line that's parallel, so we need the same slope. Again, we're going to take this equation, and we're going to solve for y. Notice when we solve for y, I get a slope of 1 fourth. So that's the slope I'm going to use. I'm going to use the point that they gave us right here. And then I'm, since I'm using this slope and this point, I'm going to put it in point slope form. Here's my slope. Here's my x value. Here's my y value. And you can either leave it like that in point slope form, or you can solve for y. Either way is fine. I don't mind. Number 13, same format. The only thing you need to know is that the slope, since it's perpendicular, is going to be the negative reciprocal. So look, we've already solved this problem from number 12. Instead of using 1 fourth, we're going to flip and change the sign. So 1 fourth perpendicular is now going to be 4 over 1. And we're going to make it negative. So that's what that is, negative 4. So again, we're going to use negative 4 for our slope, point of 7, 2. Only thing you have to do is just plug them in to your point slope form. And again, if you want to, you can solve for y, or you can leave it in point slope form. Either way is fine. Number 14. All right, key element. This says that it starts, an empty swimming pool is being filled. All right, that means it starts at 0. Well, if it starts at 0, there's my starting point. That's my B. So notice, Y equals MX plus B. That's my starting point, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's my starting point. Now, notice my rate is 11 gallons per minute. That goes in front of the X. Since the 0 goes away, you can leave it as y equals 11x. All right, the next one, it's really helpful to create a table, and that's what we ask you to do. We ask you to create a table and write an equation, so make sure you're reading the instructions on the test. All right, Ms. Kemper's going to run a 100 meters, and the first time she does it, she does it in 65 seconds. So this is my initial time. Just like on a graph, when I draw a graph, it's going to be at, this point is at 0, 065 at 0, 065, and it's going to decline like this. <clears throat> so this is my B. That's my y-intercept. The only thing I, ne I need now is my slope. And then I can put it in y equals mx plus b form. Well, it already told me that my slope is, or that she's going to decrease her time by 5 seconds each week. So every week, her time is going to increase or decrease by 5 seconds. So 65 minus 60 is 5. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So 5 over negative 1 is a slope of negative 5. Plug that in right here. Plug in your y-intercept or your starting point right there. And that is your equation of the line in slope-intercept form, this one right here. All right, moving on. Number 16. Remember, this is dashed. Okay? So pick some points. I pick this point and this point. Or actually, I pick these two. My y-intercept is 3. My slope is a positive, so it's up 1 to the right 2, so my slope is 1 half. I have a slope and a point. Voila, point slope form. Or you can put it in point uh, slope intercept form. Again, here's my slope. Here's my y-intercept, and you have an equation of a line. Now, 
this is equal, so we've got to change it. Notice that the shading is above the y's, so just simply make the y's greater than the rest of the equation. Alright, on this one, you have a solid line. Now remember, same process as number 16. Y-intercept of 4, down 2, right 1. So it's a negative 2 to the run of 1. Okay, so my slope is 2, my y-intercept is 4. Bring that information, put it in slope-intercept form. And because since the shading is to the, if you look at the shading from the y-intercept to right here, all the shading is below that, it's going to be less than or equal to. So y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 4. Number 18, same concept, remember? That's a y equals. That's a y equals. So y equals 3. Okay, y equals 3. Now, you know the shading is above, so that means all the y's have to be greater than that. So like right here, y is greater than 3. Number 19, self-explanatory. We have a negative slope. We have a positive correlation. And there's no correlation because this thing is just all over the place. Number 20. Again, draw your line of best fit. Notice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 above, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or sorry, 5 below and 5 above. I picked two points that are close to, or that are on the line. This happens to be 40 and 5. This happens to be 6 and 80. I use my change in y over change in x. This is my, how you find your slope. Remember, y minus y over x minus x. So 80 minus 5 over 6 minus 40, and I get a slope of 75 over negative 34. I simply just plug that in to my point slope form, and I used this point, 45, 40 comma 5. Here's my 40, here's my 5. And when I solved it, I used the calculator. Now notice, this section right here is equal to 22.06. I then added 5 right here, and 22 plus 5 is approximately 27 cups. Notice this is an approximation. So easy thing to do is start at 30 degrees, go up to the line, come straight across, and you will see that approximately 30 degrees, get, you should sell about 27 cups of hot chocolate. The last one we're going to do, go to your calculator. All right, this is going to be L1, this is going to be L2. Type in your data under number two, statistics. Okay, type in your data. This is L1, this is L2. All right, what you want to do is once you get your data in, look at F2, which is your calc right here. Hit your F2 button. Hit regression. And we want the single x. That's going to be uh, linear. So we're going to tap this button here. And we want the one on the left, ax plus b. And notice that gives me our, our linear regression where a replaces, we replace a with 1.4, b with 4.2. Going back to here, here's my 1.4, here's my 4.2. And we just put it in the equation like that. And that's all you have to do. All right. Thank you for listening, and hopefully this is shorter.